Okay, good morning. Uh, <clears throat> today we are going to continue our lecture on uh, choosing your uh, research topic. But the uh, research topic that I meant uh, in this session is not uh, is not meant to the uh, to your uh, uh, final project research topic, but uh, more directly to the uh, topic that you want to cover in the scientific communication class. So, uh, but somehow uh, it should be relatable between the thing that uh, we're going to talk at the moment and also the thing that uh, you're going to do in the actual uh, research of your final project, actually, uh, basically. Uh, so, <clears throat> uh, without further ado, uh, we could start our uh, discussion. Okay, let me turn on the slideshow. Okay, and then present you how do I find a research topic and then how do I identify a research gap or a, a things that need to be solved, okay, for example, or a thing that we could innovate or a thing that we could improve to get, um, uh, to get, uh, something new or something that can be more helpful to uh, people, etc., and so on. And then how we define our uh, research question, and then uh, and then uh, if we have well, uh, actually, I'm going to introduce you to abstract and citation database uh, application. Probably not today, but uh, in the uh, Thursday lecture instead. Okay, so uh, how do I find a research topic? Okay. Uh, uh, actually, there are two ways. First one is that uh, if you are applying to one advisor, for example, uh, uh, in, 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 in work on your uh, final project, uh, usually the supervisor or usually your advisor will give you a certain topic that you need to uh, study. And then uh, you're, you make a follow-up by uh, searching for the appropriate literature that can be used to, uh, to, to solve or to working on the uh, project that is given to you. Okay, so that is one um, yeah. that is one approach that a student could have, where research topic is basically given to you. But for those of you who uh, uh, doesn't that doesn't have that uh, opportunity, or doesn't have that uh, occasion where your advisor is going to give you uh, some project or some uh, topic then you might have to search by your own. For example, uh, you probably get that experience of uh, working in one institution or one company, and then you uh, uh, do internship there, and then you find an interesting uh, project that interests you there, and then you bring back that uh, ideas to your final project. So, and then uh, you, you told your advisor to guide you uh, in working on that project, et cetera, and so on. Uh, uh, so uh, so uh, searching for research topic by your own, it doesn't mean that the ideas will comes out instantly on your head, basically. Uh, sometimes it could uh, happen when you are working in an internship or probably when you are uh, reading some interesting book, for example, or you're watching some kind of an interesting uh, video uh, in YouTube, for example, or, or possibly when you are uh, traveling uh, that is outside of your hometown, for example, you might find that inspiration and then think on how we could talk about it 
uh, solve the problem of it, et cetera, and so on. So uh, there are uh, many ways that we can have certain topics that we can uh, that we can choose uh, that we could uh, study it more or research uh, more de uh, in details. Uh, however, uh, the simplest illustration that I can give to you about how can we uh, search or how can we choose or how can we look for research topic uh, uh, is, uh, is just like when we are lost in the forest. Okay, so I, I come up with this illustration. It's not by myself. I will give you the uh, reference to, uh, to the passage that I'm going to talk about uh, today. Uh, which is kind of uh, insightful for those who are going to start their uh, research. So, uh, so uh, let's suppose that you didn't have any interest at the moment. Okay? You didn't have any interest at the moment, and then uh, your lecturer uh, asks you to choose a topic that you want to talk about in scientific communications class. Okay. So, uh, so how can I find an interesting research topic? So. Uh, so uh, here from the book that I read is that suppose you are lost in the forest and you need to find out, uh, you need to find a way out. And, and what should you do? Okay, uh, you can do go off in some direction and hope that this will get out. Or you could ask yourself questions. Can I see landmarks, for example, a hilltop or a view over a large area or is there a river or a road that could lead me to some uh, town, small towns, village, uh, homes, etc., and so on? Uh, is there any direction such as downhill in which I can reasonably expect to find a way out? Are there any signs of human activity such as traffic noise or smoke, etc., and so on? So you basically uh, 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 make your brain ask for questions asking for, is there, uh, is there anything that we could solve? Is there anything that we uh, could do? Is there, an, how we can, how can we improve this? How can we do uh, this and this and that? Okay, so to solve your problem, the key is not to look for answers, but to ask the right questions, okay? So the first step is that you may generate many questions. And then the second step is to uh, choose or, or is to identify which one is the correct questions so that we can solve the problem. So if you pose enough questions, okay, some are bound to be the right ones. Uh, asking questions is essential in research because they help give focus and without such focus, we are grouping in the dark. Question posed and later pondered give needed direction to our research. So, that, that, so by generating many questions, even though at the beginning, if it's, uh, even though uh, in the beginning it sounds ridiculous, just, uh, just, just write them, okay? Just write them. Uh, where, uh, even though it's so ridiculous or it's so uh, unrelatable, but just keep writing the questions or things that is coming up on your uh, brain uh, until at the certain amount of time or until uh, you meet a period where uh, no question, no more question could be posed, then you're going to make some kind of a uh, identification whether uh, these generated questions can help you in order to solve the problem. Okay. So, so, uh, so here, uh, you might ask, or you might wonder whether all of the questions are the right ones. Okay. Of course not. So pose a lot of them. So, okay. Pose a lot of questions, even though it's sound uh, illogical, et cetera, and so on. And then uh, after that certain point where you could not uh, 
generate questions okay after you kind of tired of generating questions or after you think there are no more questions that could arise from it so breaking up large questions into smaller ones usually help in formulating those that leads to action that ultimately helps solve the problem asking question is central for a related reason uh one that might seem vague even mystical uh, human have great creative power, and then the process by which this power is released in, involves several steps. First, we think about a certain issue. Okay, so for example, uh, how can we, uh, how can we create or how can we produce a long-lasting battery, for example, uh, so that we could uh, use it in our phones to play games or to watch YouTube, et cetera, and so on, but it only requires a small amount of time in charging. For example, uh, in nowadays uh, smartphones, uh, we, could, we could charge our phones only for an hour to get a 100% battery charge. Uh, and, the, and after it's been charged, the uh, periods or the time that we could use the phone will last until a day. Okay? So it took only on an hour uh, for the battery to fully charge and we can use it throughout the day. However, if we're going to increase the application, for example, in order to power our house, so what could we do? Okay? Uh, is there any way to use the same kind of battery uh charge in a small in, in a, a short period of time but we could use it for a week for example uh that's another challenge right so uh think about that okay or how could we manage to save lives during volcano eruptions for example uh, uh, uh in order to do so probably we need to have a better uh mitigation uh plans which involves uh, physical and geophysical measurements, et cetera, and so on. And we could create strategies on how could we uh, uh, use that uh, geophysical method in our purpose in terms of saving lives during volcanic eruption, for example. So think about that certain issue first. And then, I have, and then after having formed our thought, we translate them into words by either saying them out loud or writing them, okay? So uh, talking by yourself, <laughs> as long as uh, it's concerning the uh, searching for uh, questions of, or in, in terms of uh, imposing questions or in, imposing um, things that is related to the uh, problem that we going to solve. Uh, I think it's it's okay, okay, uh, as long as uh, it doesn't mean that we kind of have uh, disabilities, for example. Uh, but uh, but posing or talking out loud, it could helps us uh, to uh, think or pose questions uh, that might be related to the topic that we're going to talk about. Or if you kind of uh, 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 not a verbal person, but you kind of uh, 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 tend to write everything down, for example, if you tend to uh, keep your emotions and keep your memories on a sheet of paper, so do so. Okay, so uh, in so uh, in order to in order to have a uh, a record, for example, a record of the things that things that might be related or, or things or questions that might be related to the uh, topic itself. You could record it into a piece of paper, okay, a blank sheet of paper that uh, that collects all of the questions that might generated from that uh, thinking session, okay? Uh, because sometimes uh, if you do it verbally, you cannot record it unless you have some kind of a tape recorder or your smartphone uh, recording, for example. Uh, so in that way, 
Okay, in that way, uh, the things uh, you keep uh, making your brain working by thinking how to impose questions that could be uh, related to the problem and how can we describe it, how can we explain it, how can we uh, solve it in a systematic way. But that is the later process. But in the beginning, uh, we can just do generating questions, okay, generating question, uh, even though it's not relatable or even though it sounds ridiculous at the, at the beginning. Okay. So ultimately, this sequence, okay, so after having formed our thought, we translate them into words by either saying them out loud or writing them down. Okay, so ultimately, this sequence leads to action that allows us to modify our world and thus have the following chain of event from thought to word to actions. So from thinking, we, uh, we uh, record it into words, words that are written in the paper or words that are recorded in the uh, equipments. And then we do actions, actions in terms of uh, searching for a uh, literature or searching for a source that talks about the problem or talks about the questions uh, or uh, talks about the answer of the problem uh, it talks about the uh, answer of the questions that we pose, et cetera, and so on. Okay, so there is a simple technique that you can use to generate large number of questions about a research topic. Take a pencil, okay, one pencil, and a blank sheet of paper, okay, and write them down any question that you can think about as research topic. So for example, uh, I have talked about how can we mitigate a disaster during volcanic eruption, for example, or how can we make or how can we produce a long lasting battery, or even though it's a simple thing, uh, how, for example, microwave is working, for example, or how LCD monitor is working, or how, uh, uh, how is the uh, for example, how, how does the process of drying your towel, for example, uh, outside of your house is working, for example, as simple as that. So the topic itself is not for the uh, uh, scientific communications class. Uh, it could be uh, advanced, okay? It could be as advanced as your, uh, your research uh, your uh, 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 final project research, for example, or uh, it could be as simple as the thing that you can find in your home. And then you uh, talk the physical or the physics aspect of it, then it, 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 it could be fine. It could be, uh, it could be enough in order to uh, pass the uh, scientific communication class itself. So uh, please uh, be reminded that the scientific communication class is not the practice session for your uh, for your final project uh, defense. So make it simpler. Okay, even though it is related to your final project, for example, you're going you just take a little bit chunk of it and then you and then you uh, talk about the research. Uh, final project that you have in a general way, for example, that's okay. Okay. Or if you find something that is interesting, for example, uh, uh, in 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 everyday life, for example, uh, the 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 mechanism of, for example, the the, the 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 physics the physics or the mechanism of a LCD TV, for example, or how uh how tesla car is operating etc and so on so the thing that is simple like this that one could be one of the uh, uh topic that you can choose in order to uh in order to pass uh, the scientific communication class because uh we're not going to uh, make you to uh talk about highly uh, advanced uh, 
uh, research thing, okay? Because uh, I think for the uh, bachelor degree uh, uh, and in the scientific communications class uh, in general, since the audience is kind of broad, taking from the uh, for from the sixth uh, research division of the uh, of the uh, of the uh, FMIPA, okay, because. Uh, because the physics study program itself doesn't have laboratories or doesn't have research divisions, and and since and then uh, since students who take scientific communications class could come from the sixth uh, research division that FMIPA have, so the topic could be diverse, right? The topic could be diverse, and then we could not make some kind of a specification into a certain topic or to a certain research division. So since the audience is general, the topic that you could choose for your main presentation could also be general, okay? Uh, even though it is encourageable for you to choose from your research project, because uh, we believe that that, that is the uh, topic that you're going to delve Okay, in the next uh, year, so that proficiency and then mastery uh, of that uh, topic uh, should be uh, improved from time to time. And then taking this uh, scientific communication class could also be uh, one of the approach that you could took in order to master the topic. Okay, to master the topic, but not to, uh, but not to work on the research itself because probably your research uh, will not coincide in in the period of our class because your research uh, because your uh, 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 final project research could be lasting more time okay because due to the fact that you need to take samples to analyze it etc and so on so uh, so uh, it is advisable for you so just talk about the uh, general aspect of or, or making a literature review of it, etc. Et okay, uh, we okay. Uh, take a pencil, a blank sheet of paper. Write down any question that you can think about the research topic. Again, uh, at the first stage, do not filter anything. Okay, do not filter your question. That is the second step. At the first, at this uh, 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 starting point, at the starting. Uh, uh, in this starting period, uh, you don't need to filter anything. Just write all of the question that comes up to your mind about that specific topic, uh, and then uh, and then you can also uh, freely associate and write down everything that comes up into mind, and then do this for an hour. Okay, do this for an hour, and then stop. Okay. This is one approach you can do. You can uh, make or you can generate any questions that you can think about from that certain topic for an hour and then stop. Or you could rest or you can stop after you run out of ideas. Okay. Uh, as with any efforts at concentration, it is best to do this in an environment where you are alone, undisturbed, on and undistracted, so that no one can interrupt your flow of questions okay uh, so so uh, so these these are the first step that you can choose uh, uh, these are the first step that you can have that you can uh, do uh, when you don't have any specific uh, research topic on your mind uh, that you found interesting to uh, to, to later on be presented in the scientific communication class. <clears throat> okay, I'm sorry for the interruption. Okay. Okay. So, write all of the questions in this sheet of paper, uh, and may, and then uh, do it for uh, some period of time. For example, for an hour, and then uh, just concentrate on, on the things, 
on that uh, one hour period. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, questions, of course, can arise in settings other than brainstorming session of group or individual. Question pops up while reading a paper, listening to a seminar or a random uh, moments during day on it. Okay, so this is the thing that I have already uh, covered previously. In order to generate questions, in order to generate ideas or questions, uh, it is not only coming up from a brainstorming uh, session like this one. Okay, so the thing that I've uh, talked about uh, earlier, so uh, generating many questions in a certain period of time, it is called as uh, brainstorming. Okay, so uh, brainstorming is not the only way you could use in order to generate questions. Question could arise from any activities that you do, from uh, watching videos, from watching uh, seminar, from reading a book, from seeing daily activities, etc., and so on. So to ensure that these questions are not lost, keep pencil and paper handy so that you can write them uh, immediately. So, uh, so, uh, so writing down or at least record anything that comes up into your mind uh, from watching the video from watching the seminar or from reading the book, et cetera, and so on, it, it will make your first step on working on your paper or working on your uh, topic more easily later on, okay? So uh, so the key of uh, generating or, or, or on uh, choosing a research topic, whether you choose to brainstorm or to uh, read a book or watch videos, etc., and so on, is to make a record of them, okay? So a piece of paper and pencil is a way or, or is a tool that you could use in order to record them, in order to record the question that comes, that's coming out from your head. And then nowadays you have um, applications, okay? Uh, applications such as uh, uh, notes, okay, in your cell phones, or Evernote, or even you have a notepad in your computer, et cetera, and so on. Those are the same kind of tools that you can use in order to keep track or you could uh, put the thing that comes out on your head. Okay. And then it is useful to carry a small fashion notebook. Uh, for those of you who uh, like to carry a notebook, and alternatively, a handheld computer can be used for this purpose. Although the author, oh well, the author is, uh, means that the, the thing that is uh, proposing for this technique uh, do not see themselves operating such device in the middle of night after particularly inspiring. Okay. So, uh, so you could choose basically if you kind of a person who use uh, gadgets a lot, then uh, then writing down or uh, typing uh, the, uh, the uh, ideas that come up to your uh, head immediately uh, could be beneficial. Actions, okay, need to move their body. You could just write in a sheet of paper using, your, using a pencil, okay? Pencil uh, is more preferable because you can erase them, you could just uh, 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 strike them if it's uh, unnecessary, etc., and so on. Um, uh, and many uh, advantages of using pencil instead of uh, using pen directly, because sometimes uh, uh, if you're making a mistake uh, in terms of writing, uh, using a pen, okay, using a pen, uh, something you could not erase them unless you have some kind of a uh, unless you have some kind of a, a eraser liquid, that white eraser liquid, to erase them. But for pencil, uh, in, uh, in terms of gener in terms of writing out ideas or draft or uh, uh, things that is done in in the preliminary in the preliminary stage, for example, I think pencil is more beneficial. 
Okay. Uh, okay, so after you post a lot of questions, the next step is to organize them. Uh, and step is to identify uh, whether the questions are relatable, logical to the problem itself. Okay, so uh, the list of questions met by free association or from brainstorming or uh, instantly comes up on your head uh, are uh, basically frames uh, uh, over time, basically frames the problem or problems that you face in your research and that prompt you to take actions. Usually embedded in the question, you have formulated it in logical order, perhaps initially hidden because research is most effective when its action are well ordered once you have made a list of questions about the topic of your research, it is therefore appropriate to organize them into some logical arrangement. So after uh, you post questions and then after you identify them, whether it's logical or not, you now make some organization. You, or, you, 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 you plan them, you organize them into a certain structure so that the whole description of the problem becomes more logical, becomes more descriptive. And then it is uh, easier, uh, it, it makes the explanation uh, of, the, uh, of the problem posed uh, more explainable, okay? Uh, it is uh, it's, it's easier to explain, becomes easier to explain, okay? So as mentioned above, this can be done particularly simply by cutting the sheets of question in pieces with one question paper per cap. So this is the uh, the uh, uh, method, okay, that uh, the author of the book suggests you to do, uh, because from that you could uh, put the uh, word into a certain category, etc., and so on. So that later on, when you make paper or you present a talk, uh, you follow that certain uh, order based on the question that, that you follow. And then these smaller slip of paper can then be moved around the table until they are reflect a logical order. Okay, so generating many questions and then you choose or you identify the uh, question that are logical and then from this logical uh, uh, questions, you organize them, okay? You organize them uh, and then you categorize them, whether this is comes in the beginning, in the middle or the end of your uh, explanation. Okay, uh, order and prioritize question. Prioritization of different question can be accomplished by defining categories for those that are related to one, another and then sorting the slip of paper within each category. The shuffling of question can of course also be carried out on the computer since text can be placed at will on screen. The process of generating questions and ordering them is applicable throughout your research career. So you can make some kind of a linear ordering like the one that we have in this one or you make a planner ordering, for example, nonlinear like this one. So this is one, uh, so, so this is, for example, uh, 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 so when we are describing the uh, physics of battery, physics of modern battery, so uh, this bubble over here probably uh, talks about the uh, 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 materials, okay, different materials that can be used in order to produce a uh, modern battery. And then the, uh, the right part or the right bubble over here probably is the efficiency of that uh, material when it, when it manufactured into a battery. And then the last one is probably talks about the, uh, uh, so the material efficiency and probably the, uh, the last one talks about the, uh, sustainability, for example, if we took them from Earth, uh, how long does it take for him to uh, disappear entirely in the in the Earth, for example? Because uh, many batteries uh, are not uh, created 
by humans is not synthetically uh, produced, but most of them are coming from uh, rare, rare earth uh, materials that need to be mined in from the earth. Okay, so the, there is the, there is one example on how we create uh, planar ordering. While linear ordering is thing that we often see in our language uh, lessons, okay, uh, whether it's in Bahasa Indonesia or in the uh, Bahasa English lessons in the high school or even in university, uh, they always taught you to create or to organize ideas in linear ordering. Uh, because usually they will suggest you to have an introductory part in the middle and then uh, and then the uh, and then followed by the descriptions on the theory okay so the uh, introductory uh, so introduction basic theory methods and then uh, data and analysis and then conclusion those are the things that is pretty common okay in uh, in, in producing an article, uh, whether it's taught in Bahasa Indonesia class or in uh, English. Uh, so uh, we, we kind of used to do that linear ordering so that when we are generating ideas, uh, at the beginning, we kind of, uh, sometimes we are conflicting on the, on the, uh, on the, how we organize it, okay, on how we organize this uh, talk or how we can organize these uh, ideas so that uh, 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 so that we can have or we can produce a good paper or a good talk presentation. But uh, the author of this book said that the first step is not move on to this ordering or move on to this organization, but just generate questions. And then from that, that you can choose the appropriate uh, question and then do ordering. So ordering is basically the third step in the on this uh, author's opinion. Okay. Okay. So uh, after your uh, after your order seems to be uh, organized. Okay. Now turn our question into a work plan. The task of making a work plan is eased by starting with the ordered list of questions and then translating the question into action that could help solve them. A good work plan contains the following elements. An ordered list of activities to be carried out, a clear indication on how these activities are uh, interrelated, uh, deliverable and timeline for each activity. While a work plan is a useful tool for keeping focus in research, it is nothing more than a tool to serve the goal of carrying out the research. The work plan itself is not the goal. Okay, the work to create the work plan itself is not the goal. Your goal is to deliver a talk or to write a paper. Okay, so the, the, the main goal is to write a paper or to present or a talk in a seminar or in a uh, 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 final project defense, for example. Uh, it can be therefore be expected that the work plan will need to be modified. Okay, so work plan could be modified at any time. Okay, even the goals itself could be modified, perhaps frequently over the course of the project. Hanging on too rigidly to a single strategy could hamper the progress. Okay, so if you only stuck on, on, on the original uh, work plan, without modification throughout the, the, the progressing of time, probably it will, well, well, probably it will benefit you for some people, okay? It will benefit for some people, but for, the, but for some people who probably have uh, any other work, any other priority, et cetera, and so on, uh, it could damage their work. It could damage the process of, 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 of finishing the paper or the research that is carrying out. So uh, uh, please be aware that modifying work plan is a normal thing. Even modifying the goals itself is also uh, a, a normal thing. Okay. Uh, so whatever background you bring to a problem, your quality as a researcher depends primarily on your ability to ask the right questions, but that can happen only if you pose a lot of questions many of which will subsequently be discarded, okay? So for example, in, uh, in, in the beginning process, you generate hundreds of questions, 
100 questions, but uh, but in the end process, probably 20 of them will be beneficial or 20 of them are things that is more related to the uh, in, to the problem that you want to solve itself. Okay, so uh, it is okay to generate question because from that many question, there will be uh, things that are uh, uh, related directly to the things of the, uh, that you want to cover. In case you have doubt about this approach, watch leaders in a research field during a seminar. Uh, these usually are individuals who comes up with number of questions and their ability to generate question, the product of an open mind is no small factor in what makes them leaders in the field. So this is come up from, so the author uh, said that uh, this practice is common thing for those of the uh, successful readers. Uh, uh, even though, uh, unfortunately, in the uh, book that I cite over here, didn't mention about the uh, specific leader uh, that he talked about, but uh, nevertheless, we could just uh, nod and agree with him that some successful people do uh, successful because they are imposing many questions, even though in the beginning it is not uh, relatable, it is not, uh, it is, uh, it is uh, 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 ridiculous at some point. Okay, but uh, after some times, okay, uh, he can found that, uh, or he, he, or, he or she could find uh, that uh, from many generated questions, there are questions that are uh, specific and, 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 and solid to the uh, ways on how we solve it. Okay, uh, so this is the book that I mentioned in terms of uh, ways uh, of how we choose our uh, research topic. Uh, I, you, uh, so this is the, the, uh, the uh, title of the book and also the author. Uh, the Art of Being a Scientist, a Guide for Graduate Students and Their Mentors. So although it is meant for graduate students and their mentors, uh, but I think for the uh, bachelor students uh, or fourth year senior students of ITB, it is it's suitable because they need to uh, because they need to impose a lot of questions or impose of a lot of uh, curiosity uh, with their uh, specific riches, for example, in their uh, uh, final project. Uh, and then some of them probably will go to graduate studies. Okay. Some of them will go to a research field. Some of them will go to the professional world that also need generating ideas, Gen, uh, uh, needs, uh, needs generating ideas in, so, in order to solve a problem, in order to create a paper, in order to, to, to deliver a talk, for example. So uh, bear in mind that the um, things that is uh, given you here in the, uh, in the lecture, uh, it's not only limited to those who are going to pursue uh, graduate study. Uh, the, the same approach could be beneficial in the professional world and also in the uh, uh, research world that is not in the academia. For example, in uh, in the uh, Ministry of Education, etc. and so on. Okay, so uh, so that is way on how we could produce. Uh, uh, questions in order to uh, 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 so how can we get a research topic uh, is so first is get your interest uh, well firstly is to point out your interest what is your interest and then after you define the specific interest that that triggers you to do something then pose a lot of questions from posing a lot of questions you identify them what uh, questions that is more direct to the problem and then make a strategy make an outline and organ and organize them so that you can uh, working out later into a work plan and the work plan is to uh, make the paper or make the talk based on the question that you generate uh, earlier okay so that is one approach on how could we uh, produce ideas if we don't have any specific topics that is given to us. Uh, another 
uh, perspective. Okay, I can stop here. I will uh, see, or I will seek another. another uh, source okay another source probably coming up from youtube okay so here in the edunex i hope everybody else uh, always accessing the edunex uh web page or the edunex uh, learning management system that i uh, update regularly so in the edunex uh, as uh, this is, uh, I, 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 I uh, post some interesting video in terms of the uh, lecture itself on how do I find a research topic, uh, how do I uh, identify a research gap, defining uh, your research question, etc. and so on. So today in, Tuesday, in the Tuesday session, uh, uh, we could use this video, for example, on how do I find a research topic based on uh, other experience. Uh, okay. This is Amir Pitakarwa over here. Uh, and then uh, you could access them. Okay, you can access them at any time, uh, any time that is, that is uh, uh, convenient for you to, to watch. Okay, and then uh, other alternative, for example, if you go to YouTube and then write how to choose a research topic, you could also find uh, another uh, another uh, approach or another uh, opinion made by another author. For example, case state. This is from uh, case state uh, libraries. I think it's coming up from the uh, case state. Uh, I don't know whether it's a, Ken a Kentucky State uh, University or Kansas. State uh, University, but let me check. Okay, so this is K State uh, about. Uh, so this is coming from the library of the K State University, and K State itself is a. Okay. Oh, Kansas. Okay. So this is coming out from Kansas State uh, University. Uh, and then the library of Kansas State University uh, they, uh, uh, produced a video that tells students how to develop a good research topic, which is related to the uh, how we choose for research topic itself. So, and then many authors, uh, many videos also could, uh, uh, you could choose them uh, in order to uh, get different opinion on how we generates research topic, et cetera, and so on, okay? So, uh, so I'm just going to let you watch a video or two, okay? So here in the Edunex, I have already made a guide for today's uh, activities. Uh, you can watch video one, video two, and video three, uh, or you could search for other video that is related to the uh, topic from another uh, researcher which has probably have a different opinion on how we approach that. okay uh, okay i will stop the, the recording